Welcome back to the Fox Robbins Business Show. Step on into our studio. Our web. Yeah, <laughs> get, get caught in our web. <laughs> uh, come on in. Uh, this is not going to hurt one bit. It's going to be, in fact, it's going to be fun. Uh, we've got a, uh, we've got a, uh, we're going to do two episodes back to back. This is the Fox Robbins Business Show. Uh, and this is all about entrepreneurship and small business. Uh, you might say, what, what about it? Well, everything. I mean, <laughs> there, there Pick, isn't a topic that is beyond our reach. Absolutely. We will touch on any subject that has to do with business. Right or wrong. Maybe <laughs> even two or three times. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> right or wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you what I think. I'm the co-host, Bill Fox, but the other co-host, I need me. you to pay attention to this guy because they say, now, uh, don't get me wrong, this isn't uh, my own personal opinion. This is out on the street. This is the this opinion is the of the top. market, the yes. marketplace in general. Right. says that this guy is exquisite. Well, that's true. He's notorious. Yeah, unfortunately. But he's uh, thought to be a remarkable individual. He is Coach Robbins. My wife thinks so. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bill, how you doing? Uh, and Coach, uh, we're going to test you today. This is, we're going to talk about the most common mistakes made by first-time entrepreneurs, which are rookies. I made most of them. <laughs> 30 years for 35 There's, years. There's uh, actually four, yep. there four, four people who, who contributed to this. Mr. Carlson, Mr. Issa, Mr. Rose, and Mr. Young. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we got a lot of input to, uh, uh, and we From want your Carlson is a Rose and Yang. <laughs> Carlson is a Rose. Well, and Yang. there's some of these things. Having reviewed them, as I told you before the show started, <laughs> it's either Mr. Carlson is a Rose or Yang, and I'm going to go to war because I don't agree with some of the stuff that they wrote. But we'll get uh, to that. Well, we're going to get to that pretty Absolutely. quickly. Absolutely, everybody has an opinion. We'll step right in. Of course, uh, one of the things about the. Um, first-time common mistakes, our coaches, that the, uh, you know, starting up a business from scratch, no doubt about it, is, is, a, is a very risky uh, undertaking. It's risky, it's nerve-wracking, it's difficult. Yeah, and, it's uh, a the, lot of work. The, uh, the failure rate is it's high. Uh, unacceptable, really. It's yeah. 50, 60 percent or, you know. What, whatever it is, it's too high. Whatever the number is. That's our job to fix that. We're going to fix that. If you pay attention. <laughs> We're we will put right you now. in the positive side. <laughs> We're going to cut Maybe. that, cut that uh, bomb out rate in half. Oh, by a third. <laughs> and um, the uh, first one, we're going to start off with your coaches. Uh, uh, the authors say, stop drinking your own Kool-Aid. <laughs> right. That is, uh, you know, stop committing suicide on your own, uh, business suicide. Well, everybody loves their ugly baby, no matter how ugly it is. You know, it's my baby, you know. Well, good. So These I, authors say be brutally honest with yourself. I agree. Or, or, yep. or learn to be yeah. brutally honest. You have to be. See your, see your company for what it is. Right. Uh, make informed decisions. Don't believe all the stories you tell yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A healthy dose of skepticism, and uh, but not, but don't get bogged down in self-doubt. What's your, what are your comments? Well, yeah. I agree. Don't, don't belay the self-doubt part. You have to be, uh, you have to be self, uh, uh, believe in yourself. You have to have an internal locus of control. You need to know. You know what? It's not always going to go great. But somehow you have to have the faith that you are capable of fixing it or finding somebody that can help you fix it because there's a lot of people out there that can help you. But you need to have a healthy dose of skepticism that says, what if or maybe what can go wrong? You should look at both sides of the issue. Oh. Right. It is, you've, perhaps you've seen people who are just there. Uh, so uh, drawn up in themselves and uh, self-protective. So protective and Myopic view of everything. Yeah. No, don't don't take that. You know, I just saw a movie, Bohemian Rhapsody, about oh Queen. Ooh. Great movie. It really was an excellent movie. But one of the things that I saw in that movie is when Freddie returns to the band and he said, you know what, I thought I could make it without you guys. He said, I hired the best musicians 
They did exactly what I told them every time I told them. And everything turned out to be garbage. <laughs> because I didn't have you disagreeing with me, his, other, his old band member. Yeah. I didn't have you rewriting it. I didn't have dirty looks from you. He's pointing to the old band members. Yeah. I needed you and your skepticism and your alternative opinions to really make it good. Yeah. And I, I teach it all the time. A little conflict is a good thing. It has to be controlled. But you'd need to be looking at things other Some than your own. people can't handle that, they Coach. Can, well, they better handle it or get a day job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, uh, next point the authors make, uh, Coach, is stop doing, quote, busy work all the time. Mm. Uh, do you actually need to bake the cupcakes or, uh, put, or stamp, put, uh, put stamps on them? Put the, the label on them? Yeah, put I the know. Label, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, CEOs don't need to do everything or don't need to feel that they must do everything. Surround yourself with good people and delegate uh, except, except for the, uh, the uh, understanding of the customer's you know, the money, the money issues, and the overall uh, product market fit. The product market, absolutely. Product market fit and customers go together. So absolutely. Your, and you got to, the CEO has, those are core competencies of the company, and those are the things the CEO's got to pay attention to. No, the, C, the CEO has to delegate. That's what you have employees for. Delegate. Even though you may think you're the best at doing something that's really not all that important, these things are important. Customers, product market fit, money, you know, cash flow. How many times have I said CFI, MIT, We're getting to that. All right, we'll get to that. <laughs> but how many times? But when it comes to, like I say, putting stamps on the mail or, you know, I mean, there are certain things you need to delegate. You may feel and you may be right that as the CEO, you could do it better than anybody in the building. But that doesn't mean you have to do or should be doing everything in the building. It's your job to become a manager of people, to delegate somebody who you feel is capable of doing it, and training them, and teaching them, and monitoring them, not abdicating to them, that they're getting the job done. And that's how you grow employees, so you can be released as the CEO to do the important things, like pay attention to customers, and their wants and needs and desires, and the money. But if you have a, a, someone says, I have to do it myself to, have, to get it done, yep. uh, there's something, there's an issue behind that that uh, you, you're saying that probably because you have more attention to detail. Yeah, you might have. You might have. Right. Uh, so what? But, that, but, you, but you're, not, you're not delegating and passing that on Absolutely. to others. There's only so much time in a day, and you should, the CEO should be paying the most attention to the things that she should be paying attention to on behalf of the leadership of the company. Hey, maybe you're congratulating yourself that you're the only one who can do it. You might be better at it than anybody. Well, I'm the but... only one who can do this. You're wrong. Somebody else can do it. Maybe not as well, but that's your job as a manager, right. to teach them how to do it okay. so you can move on to important stuff. But So don't get bogged down in busy exactly. work. Exactly, busy for, work. For the wrong reasons. Busy, business doesn't have a why in it. Busyness. <laughs> it has an I. It has an I, but not a Y. <laughs> Coach, the, 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 uh, the next recommendation by the authors is stop, wor stop working y yourself to, to death here. Um, do you actually think you have to work 100% of the time? Or you think, well, you're setting an example? Running this business is a marathon. 26, 26 miles. 26-mile marathon. Not, not 100, 100 yards. yards. Right. Oh, uh, successful, the authors, that's a, that's a good point that they make, that successful exits, exits from a business. I mean, getting started, getting up and running, get the business going, get it you know, smoothed out, get a good product market fit, you put that together, and then get out, yeah. if that's your plan. Sell it to some company, and move on with your life, or take it public, which of course, you know, it, yeah. it's a biggie. 
but get your cash out for all but the work. But the authors say that's a good point. They say yeah, that, takes, that's it, a, uh, typically that could easily be seven to ten years. Absolutely. Uh, easily. Easily seven to ten oh, years. Marathon, and, and, not and, that, and, and that's if it scales big. Yeah. If it takes longer, because look at, I mean, there are a lot of small, most of the businesses we, I talk to, you talk to, we talk to, uh, they're lifestyle businesses. That's somebody that's either buying or starting a business, and they're going to run that business for the next 25, 30 years, and then get out. Yeah. You know, the seven to 10 years thing, that, you know, that's a scaled business that the investors come in and and then they flip it to some big corporation yeah. or, again, take and it public. And there is a uh, thinking, there's a plan to get, to get out. Well, there should be an exit plan. The investor wants to have an exit plan. They want to put their money in and say, when am I going to get my return and what is my return going to be? Uh, the, okay, you're going to, you we're going to be acquired by gigantic corporation in seven to ten years for ten times money. Thank you. Here's my check. But the authors are saying there, there must be some time to relax, take a breath, breathe, Breathe deeply. Breathe. You can't uh, yep. take care of others if you can't take care of yourself. You got to recharge your batteries. You're no good if your batteries out of electrons. <laughs> Next one is uh, the authors uh, uh, issue a, issuing a warning here. Stop thinking half baked. Uh, there's talking about uh, building a startup as a side project doesn't work. Like you know, just doing doing a partial, you know, a startup yep. on the side, uh, doing, some, doing something that is, quote, investable, that others would invest in, means taking the big leap. Mm -hmm. You get a leap off the build at, uh, you know, 10-story building. That's right. And hope that there's a uh, net down below. Well, or you can fly. <laughs> Stop dipping your toes in the swimming pool. No one will invest if you don't have skin, and all of your skin, in the game. Right. Do you agree? Are you agree with this point? What do you? What you're thinking about this half? Page? Most of it, I agree with the the part that I want you to be careful of in, in reading this quick. You know, quickly building a startup as a side project doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work at some stage if you're looking for somebody to invest in it or if you're really trying to scale it. But the reality is that people have to eat every day and people have to pay the bills every day. And unless they're able financially to step away from their paying job and start a business, yeah. then they do have to start part-time. But at some point, they do have to realize they're going to commit to this full-time. They're able to keep the wolves away, my silly expression, yeah. with the money that the com company's bringing in and take a salary commensurate with what they need. Right. But unless they step away and get into it full-time, nobody's going to invest in it. It's never going to scale. You need to devote 60 hours a week to something. It's yeah. not a 30-hour-a-week job. But again, most people, quite frankly, do start a business part-time in today's world because they need to eat, right? But once they see, oh, my goodness, this thing is really going to go, then they can afford to step away and live on. Unless you're married to Bill Gates, you've got to pay attention to that type of issue. So then an attitude here, you could be, you say, I just I start up a little thing on the side and then I'll, I'll get investors in, and then I'll get involved. No, no, that won't work hey, that be, way. No, no, you got to jump in they're, before they're, the investor. They're attacking a, 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 an attitude here. Absolutely. You're talking about a necessity if I'm trying to get the business going, and I still have to put some bread on the table. Exactly, uh, exactly. That's not, that's not the wrong reason. No, that's, that's a the necessity. right reason. Like I said, unless and you have a bigger plan in mind. Right. At some point, this business will be able to support my full-time commitment to it. Right. And then I'm going to step away and I'm going to devote my full, uh, full time to building this. Then investors are going to be interested in putting money in. Then bankers would be interested in loaning you money, right? But you've got to be committed to it at some point. But okay. a lot of people start a business part time. So that could be an attitude problem. Absolutely. Uh, the next one uh, with the authors is uh, stop, stop hiding, stop hiding behind fake traction. Mm -hmm. First timers highlight what looks good and they hide the bad, they say, the authors say. Yep. All my users, uh, you, you, you're thinking, all of my users love my product, but you only have 12 users. <laughs> uh. You need 500 to 1,000 users to get the, the attention of investors. Uh, how many users, and how many users will pay up front 
None is the answer. None or you even, you haven't asked, or mm. you're afraid to ask. Right. What's your reaction to all of that? Well, again, uh, you know me, I never agree with 100% of anything. I've got my own opinions on certain issues, but in, under specific circumstances. In this case, uh, first time highlighters, what looks good and hide bad. No, don't hide the bad. Bring out the bad, the good, the bad, the ugly, as I like to say. Everybody loves my product, really? <laughs> Do they really? Have you talked to them? Have you asked them? Have you asked them for referrals? Have you asked them to review your product on your own website? Now, this thing says you need 500 to 1,000 users. Well, I mean, I don't know how the author gets to that. I'm not interested in the number of users as I am in the sales. I mean, the no I'm interested in the money side, not how many people are buying my product. But if I got 500 users each buying $1 product every year, I haven't got a business there. So I don't know how he gets to this 500 or 1,000 users, but I'm not going to beat I him up over it. No, no, it's okay. But these, I think the, uh, the point is these authors, I take them to be West Coast, you know, California yeah. types who are, um, are built, they're building businesses for the Internet. Yeah. And, and they're consistent users. Every, it's, you know. it's about money, not number of users. So, I mean, naturally, I want to have a lot of users, and uh, each one represents a small percentage of my company. You know. I don't want two users that are giving me $100,000 a month. That's, get, that's risky. Yeah. <clears throat> so if I've got 1,000 users, and they're each giving me a certain number of dollars every month, and they're subscribing to it, and that shows that Visa, if I had investors, I could scale this thing and have a million users a month. Okay, then I understand what the author's trying to say, right? It's also, I think, yeah, yeah I think you have to uh, take this as a yeah, you, uh, you a need concept, a, not the numbers. You need explanations to behind what the author's referring to. And These also things can't be taken. Also, those twelve people, yeah. is your mother, your dad. Yeah, your three brothers. Yeah, exactly. You know, four cousins. That doesn't and prove a next anything. Door neighbor. Right. That doesn't prove a thing. Right. <laughs> and re and by the way, I just work with a client who has a wonderful product potential, and he's got to scale this thing up in a hurry. And the biggest user in the country happens to be a, a, a utility company in the Midwest. Actually, twenty six different utility companies, and they're interested in his product. But he doesn't have the cash to get started making these things. I said, have you asked them for a purchase order and asked for a 50% deposit? Oh, great. Okay, look at buy $10 million worth of these things. Give me $5 million bucks up front. I'll start shipping them in 90 days. Hey, let's, we could be in business, yeah. right? right? Ask, ask the uh, user. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to fund this up front? I'll give you a special deal. I would also say, you know, to that startup, you know, uh, I would add my perspective that uh, with utility companies as a customer, mm -hmm. they are very conservative. They right. don't move fast. Very slow. You don't get a, a right. decisions like this Takes out of an electric utility. They, are, they tend to be bureaucracies. Well, they are bureaucracies. I'm not trying to be a wise guy. No, but no, you know, I know you, that. You have to know if you're starting that business that... Uh, uh, don't don't be expecting fast turnaround decisions. It's going to take a long from time from that type of customer. That's right. And and we've been working on this for about six months already. Yeah, right. And it might take another three months before we get a decision. Uh, next one, coach, is uh, stop counting chickens before they hatch. Yeah, Here's right. an old piece of. Uh, That's uh, the old one. Old piece of advice. Uh, interested investors. Interested investors not calling you back. <laughs> Is not money in the bank. <laughs> I got I got three investors who are. Oh, interested they're in. they're really in, interested, in it, and I call they them, and they're they not calling me back. <laughs> uh, right? No, they're not interested. Uh, close the close your deal. <coughs> yep. Customers who say they would buy the product is not money in the bank. Again, close your deals. The deal is closed when you get a purchase order. You deliver the product, and you get paid. <laughs> so it's a cash-to-cash -cash cycle, okay? You buy it or you create it, the customer buys it, and the customer pays for it. Now you've closed the deal, okay? Even if you ship the thing and you haven't been paid, that's not a closed deal. Or better yet, purchase order plus 20% down. That's nice. <laughs> right. You would, you that's would, not closed. Would, you would be encouraged by that. I would love it. 
I would love it. And, you know, to go back to asking people to pay up front, which is on the previous slide, that's, that's what uh, Kickstarter and those, those, uh, those programs are all about. Going on there and saying, would you pre-buy these things? Speaking yes, they're which, great. When you were in the, in the electronic supply yeah. and you had, you had a big order, Yep. You got a down payment. We got a down payment on anything special ordered. Yeah. That's for sure. Anything that goes into my inventory, no. We created an account receivable. What did you get, 20, th uh, 10, 20, 30? Sometimes, 40, we got, uh, sometimes we got 60% because that was going to be our cost of goods, and I wanted to cover it, especially if it came in. Yeah. And then the company either went bankrupt or, God forbid, that, but yeah. uh, just said, no, I, we don't want it now. Well, <laughs> guess yeah. what? You own it. Well, we're not going to take it. Great. At least I got it covered, you yeah. know? Anyway, so that, that, that's Special an order. Special orders, right? yeah, right. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, uh, now, this is a tricky one. i got to test you on this one. The, the authors say, stop trying to avoid paying lawyers. This is tricky. You are running, you're running a complicated legal entity of, called a business. Mm -hmm. Are you getting funding from investors? Are you selling, even selling stocks and bonds, or prefer, you know, preferred stock, or uh, uh, are you uh, license? Are you licensing? Are you leasing, you know, property? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. This is all speculative. Yeah, right. Uh, but don't outsmart yourself. Uh, lawyers expensive, yes. Worth it, also yes. What's your take on all of that? Basically, at its core, what the authors are saying, I agree with, believe it or not, is uh, much I am against uh, getting involved with legal issues. I'm totally against getting involved with any litigation. The only people that think it's a good idea to get involved with lawsuits uh, at any stage, especially in the nascent or the early stage of a business, are lawyers. They're the only ones that think that's a great idea. But to have good legal advice available to you when you're trying to do franchising, do licensing, getting money from investors. Uh, you should have a lawyer, a business lawyer, who understands those complex subjects. Or, for instance, if you're looking to protect your product by going to the USPTO and getting a patent, you do need a good lawyer who understands that particular right. type of law. I tell you, people, if you need heart surgery, you don't go to a brain surgeon or a proctologist, God forbid, okay? <laughs> you go to a heart surgeon, right? Well, in these issues, I agree. Don't try to shortchange yourself and not have a lawyer review the important documents when it comes to franchising protect stocks. Yourself. Protect yourself and your company. Uh, so overall, I'd say, yeah, you, you need to have a good group of lawyers that can help you along the way and keep, keep things above board legally, because you don't want to get into litigation. That's where things get ugly, uh, and yeah. this helps you avoid it. You right. notice that. <laughs> oh, you don't want, like I said, the only people who think uh, getting involved with lawsuits at any stage of a business are lawyers. <laughs> uh, next, point, <clears throat> next point made by the author's coach is stop trying to serve two kinds of customers. The, uh, the authors say you can't do two things great. It, it, we're, we're talking about a startup here. Yep. Not a mature business. Right. Startups don't have the time or the money to manage two major product, uh, product market fit uh, uh, situations. Don't fool yourself. Uh, split focus may end up in mediocrity. If you want to focus on idea number two, great, then pivot and go toward it. What do you, what's your take on that? Well, I got a big take on this one. Multitasking <laughs> is garbage. All right? If anybody ever asks you, are you good at multitasking? I'll say no, I'm not. Yeah, I can do it, but I'm not going to be as effective on either of these tasks or either of any of these tasks unless I'm able to focus on a task. And as a matter of fact, when I focus on one task, I can get rid of that effectively, efficiently, and move on to the second task. But don't ask me to do two. Same thing happens with a small business, in the big business. You need a minimum viable product, MVP, to get started. And you go ahead and you start to work on it. Focus, focus, focus on that product, those customers, that target. Now, if you see that you should 
the last statement, pivot to idea number two, then focus 100% on idea number two and get rid of idea number one. That's okay to pivot to something you see a better opportunity, but don't try to do more than one thing at once. Focus, focus, focus. You gotta have a proper mindset. Like I say, multitasking, that's baloney. This next one is interesting. I think you'll find it interesting, Coach. It says, the authors say, stop believing your, pro your product is your company. Mm -hmm. Your company is the value you provide to your customer. People want, sure, people want reliable products, of course. They want quality, they demand customer it. Customer value and your team are the, customer value and your team are the real company. Make your customers happy, making your team happy, your pro the mar pro product market fit, that's what these guys call. Yep. But you, you get focused that I have uh, the greatest, you know, mousetrap here, and uh, you're, you're maybe you, you, you uh, end up being blinded to that, uh, to that idea. What, what's your take on this? I got a big take on this one, too. I love this stuff. <laughs> it is about perceived value in the eyes of the customer. You have a price you sell something at. The customers perceive the value is here for the money they're giving you, yeah. they're going to buy a lot of it. If it's this way, they're not going to buy any of it. They're going to catch on and say, I'm not getting the value for the, mo the money. I tell people, you can buy a Toyota Corolla or you can buy an L, uh, a Lexus LS500, right? Uh -huh. And one's a lot more expensive than the other, but both have a perceived value based on the price. So price, perceived value, the spread that the market perceives between the value they get and the money they give, that's what people are buying. Mm. They're not buying on price alone, they're buying on perceived value. Now who, who provides that, quite frankly, it's your company. And who is your company? It's your employees, it's your team. People used to ask me, what's your most valuable uh, part of your business? The, the lines you represent, your customers? I'd say, no, my people. I can't be in six different places all over the, the states and, and be taking care of customers. Those are the people that take care of my customers. That's why they're my most important asset. <laughs> uh, Coach, uh, we're going to do two episodes because yep. we have some more issues to take up. Right. So uh, we'll see you guys uh, in episode number two. This is the Fox Robbins Business Show. This uh, episode will be uploaded to YouTube for uh, you know, viewer convenience. Uh, and it's uh, uh, on YouTube, we're at Fox Robbins, F-O-X-R-O-B-B-I-N-S, Fox Robbins. Uh, click, and there's a library of shows, including this one. But make sure you go on to episode number two, and we will see you next time.